What's going on guys, Sam Prentice is back once again. In front of me here, I've got the Soval SV06 Plus. It's taken a few weeks stuck in customs to bring you this footage, but this is the bigger brother to a very popular and very successful SV06. Let's get straight on into this one. <laughs> You are watching a master at work. The Soval SV06 Plus 3D printer is a high quality and affordable 3D printer that has been designed to cater for the needs of both professional and novice users. This printer is an upgraded version of the Soval SV06 and comes with a range of improved features that enhance its performance and user experience. One of the most notable features on the SV06 Plus is the large build volume of 300 by 300 by 340 millimeters, which allows users to create larger models and more complex 3D prints with ease. Soval has outfitted their new prints with essential tools and a small ball of filament to kickstart your printing journey. Additionally, their package comes with a user manual and a useful tip guide providing instructions on how to address various print quality concerns. The Plus model boasts exceptional print performance thanks to its planetary driven direct drive extruder. This feature enables faster than average print speeds of up to 150 millimeters per second while maintaining precision and accuracy. The printer is also equipped with a filament runout sensor that halts the printing process when filament is depleted, allowing you for easy replacement and seamless continuation of the printing job. So to summarize, the printer has an all metal direct dry with a 4.3 inch color touchscreen. The hot end heats to a limit of 300 degrees Celsius, expanding the range of printable filaments. The printer also boasts a decent sized print volume, automatic bed leveling, a PEI flex bed for hassle-free print removal, a 32-bit motherboard with silent stepper drivers, and the G34 Auto Z alignment for the leveling of the X axis, contributing, of course, to a smoother printing experience. Dual Zs with railed guides ensuring stable prints, while an easy to use belt tensioner further enhances the print quality. Finally, the printer is also backed by a supportive community and encourages open source collaboration. We are going to be facing the motors towards the front of the printer. Again, very easy locators from left and right, held together here with just four bolts. Super, super simple. Again, the design on this printer, along with its younger brother, the 06, makes these printers easy to work on and accessible. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. So if you're looking for high quality and affordable PCB manufacturing, 3D printing and CNC machining services, look no further than PCBWay.com. With their state-of-the-art facility, PCBWay.com produces top-notch printed circuit boards, 3D prints and machine parts to your exact specifications at unbeatable prices. Their team of experts are committed to customer satisfaction, making PCBWay.com your one-stop solution for prototyping and production needs. Visit PCBWay.com today and discover why they're the trusted choice for engineers and hobbyists alike. PCBWay.com, thank you once again. Okay, so there we are. Now then, this is super simple, this next part, because the box on the back here literally goes into the locators on the back of the frame. Uh, all we need to do is slot and lock. Super simple, this one. Show you again. All we do here is we take this box in its entirety and lock easy really really easy the power supply again is equally as easy here um generic power supply 24 volt and we're running this at it says p500 it looks like a 350 possibly i don't know what the size of this is um we we assume that so all we do with this again plug this into this rather unique plug i've not seen one of these before does it tell you what it is this is an mt60 plug Plug him straight on in there. And next, we're gonna grab a couple of these bolts. What we're gonna do is just screw this in. It's quite a nice compact design, actually. Tighten him up. Again, we've plugged this in already, so we know what we're doing with that. Sure. And while we're at it, if you look just down here, you should see some cables. There's one for the uh, filament runout sensor, which is up here. And there should be one in here for the Z as well. Uh, there's certainly one sticking outside here. Let's just turn him upside down for a second, just so we can show you. So here it is. He comes around to here. This one just plugs straight on into here, like that. And we do the same on this side as well. Next, we've got the auto, uh, the filament runout sensor at the top here. Now, from what I can see here, we just need to cut this one cable here. It's a cable tie. Snip him off. So the next thing is obviously when we plug in the hot end, uh, this is the cable that we're going to be using for that. We just pop that into the slot for a second. 
And here we have, I'm not sure what one's for yet, but we have the sediment runout sensor part here. And all I'm going to do is just plug that in, making sure we're keeping it out of the way of everything else here. It's all super simple. So on here, this is the X. It's the X axis. And we have another cable here, which we're just going to plug into the X axis up the top here. So we are all plugged in as far as cables are concerned um, in and around the beds. The bed seems to be flowing quite nicely back and forth. So is this giant PIE sheet. Because what's that? Madness. Just for size comparisons for a second here, guys. Look at that. You're going to be able to print some pretty big things on this thing. So here we have the hot end. And I kind of like this assembly, uh, mainly because it's easy to just disconnect it and work on it should you need to. If you need to replace any of the parts, or you could buy a whole separate hot end, um, making it very, very easy. Again, it is a direct drive system here uh, with their own kind of unique take on what I would say is almost like a BMG kind of setup. And again, everything just plugs into the top here. Really easy to sort of work on here. Uh, mainly plastic parts on this from what it looks like here, but um, nice sleek little design here. So let's whip that on. Go. So all we've got in here is three bolts to put inside. So that should be relatively easy. If you're certainly looking to change this or modify it, or if there's a blockage of any kind, if you need to service it, very, very easy. Easy. Super easy. So if you, for regards to the screen next, we have got a color display screen here. The cable is just whipped around the corner. Break anything. Yes. And we've got three locator screws just on the side here. Find the cable. Very easy to plug in. Just like that. Pop it down. And we're good to go. Have to check the power supply as well. And that is set to being 230. So we're going to pull this one off. So our last two screws here are for the filament holder. And of course, the auto run out sensor as well. You do get a 200 gram roll of filament as well, should you choose to use it. we go and we just plug that one into the sensor at the top here and we'll pull that down into the direct drive system here the prime there we go right we're now ready to plug it in i'm not going to use the cable i've got here because i've already got one plugged in so let's whip this one straight in here we go fingers crossed We've got lights. Awesome. So we're going to move this forward a couple of weeks now. And although it is printing now, it's not printing well. Let me show you what's happened. So what we have here is filament oozing out between the heat block and the heat break. This is basically covering the heat block and letting out quite a bad smell of boiling filament. This also means that the filament isn't coming out of the hot end as per intended because it's being lost to this gap. The fix here would usually be to tighten up the parts and removing the gap. However, the filament has started to grow over the Fermista cables, so I'm not entirely sure whether or not I want to start melting things. And really what I should be doing is contacting Sovil Support. So that's exactly what I've done. I've already reached out to Sovil Support and shown them some photos, and we'll see how that goes. I will follow this video up, of course, with a secondary video basically showing what happens. Um, what I will say, though, is that the build size, the upgrades that they've done off of the SV06, do seem to be very, very good. And in fact, the print quality, other than a little bit of stringing on this benchy, again, was really, really quite nice. So I certainly would still suggest this, even with this problem, I doubt very much it's going to be the same problem that you're going to experience if you're looking to buy one of these. But I still would say, and just to certainly stand by it, the SV06 and SV06 Plus for the money are absolutely amazing value. Again, 300 by 300 by 340 with auto bed leveling, a PI bed surface, full color touchscreen, Marlin firmware, which you can mod. So things like PID tuning and advanced K, all that good stuff inside of the menu, sensorless homing, 
auto runout sensor and removable extruder stroke hot end which is going to pay dividends in this case that's all ramped up for 349 dollars and of course that hot end heats up to 300 degrees enabling you to print some of the more exotic filaments with that direct drive system the svr6 at the moment is currently 259 dollars so check out the affiliate links below so thank you again to pcbway.com and to soval this isn't over yet we're going to forget this fix we're going to have this thing printing i'm going to do another review on this um so guys if this has helped you out at all maybe if you've got some thoughts on what the sv06 plus could be doing i'm sure tons of you have got really good experience with this already so good luck to you but don't forget guys like and subscribe and we will see you next time bye for now you are watching a master at work